Thanks for tuning in to Hobbs and Horror Movie Review Podcast. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Hobbs and Horror. I'm Eric. I'm Jason. I'm Gavin. Wow, no special names today. Nope. You can no. tell that it's oh, been I... a long time since we've done this. Oh, yeah. because... I figure people forgot who we were. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm Willard. <laughs> Willard, yes. <laughs> Willard. Man. So, so we are finally back after a, a long, long vacation, and we're reviewing a fine movie yes. called Pieces. Yes. Rocking in at an IMDb rating of what, 6.0, you said? It's... That's good. That's actually yeah. really good for for this podcast. <laughs> That's way too high for us. <laughs> <laughs> so get, let's kick her off, if everybody remembers. Yeah. Gavin, you kick her off with a little... Yes. I mean, kind of a plot synopsis of this So movie? we start out, there's a young boy. Uh, well, I mean, not a young boy, but a boy. We might be in Boston. Um, and for whatever reason, this kid likes to experiment on animals it's really kind of weird. Doesn't have a lot of friends. Uh, his parents, so it's it's like Jason. His parents, <laughs> his yes. parents, his parents don't pay a lot of attention to him. <laughs> then one day he meets uh, this weird looking alien creature named Trumpy. And, <laughs> <laughs> and they become best buddies. But unknown yeah. to the kid, Trumpy's mom is out looking for him. Yeah. And Trumpy's mom is going to kill everybody that gets between her and her baby. So we get to watch these exciting adventures on full. Wow, I must have been asleep for a lot of that movie because that's not what I remember. You know what's weird about that is I'm trying to think of which weird fucking alien movie that is from <laughs> since we've been watching so many. It is not from Homo T. It's not? Okay. <laughs> is that Extraterrestrial Visitor? It is from Extraterrestrial Visitors, which uh, is directed by J.P. Simon, who also directed Pieces. Oh, oh wow! So clever, so clever by Gavin yes. there, huh? Oh, okay. uh, and also directed Slugs, which I really enjoy. Did he direct Space Jam? No, he did not. Oh, okay. So, just out of curiosity, Cthulhu was Mansion, this? Which no one has seen. I've seen, but no one else has seen. Was yeah. this movie um, originally in Spanish or something? And, Correct. Yes. Okay. I did. I didn't know if the production was so bad that none of the their malls matched up, or if it was supposed to be in another language and it was. Uh, whatever they call I it. I don't know. At least two of the actors are American. Okay. So there there are at least some American actors in it. I don't know if they all are. Um, and I do know, yeah, the director is Spanish. And I know it was partially made in Spain. So, yeah, there's there's another version on the DVD that's like the Spanish version. I assume it's basically identical. Maybe some of the words are different, mm -hmm. but yeah. All right. So yeah, what's our takeaways from this movie? Uh, um, <laughs> well, I don't know. I think. I, wait, I, wait, I, wait, wait, wait. You never gave a real, real synopsis oh, for this movie. <laughs> okay. Jesus. Yeah. So the real, the real thing is we start off with a young boy. <laughs> uh, he might be in Boston and the young boy uh, is putting together a, filthy jigsaw puzzle his mother catches him and the boy doesn't appreciate being caught and hacks his mother to death uh, we jump 40 years into the future at a college university where now college girls are being uh, chopped up presumably by this boy 40 years later but we don't know who he is yes. now exactly yeah i mean it's a it's a great setup you know the f finding the kid uh thanks honey <laughs> i'm just not gonna pretend that it didn't, didn't happen my lovely girlfriend just brought us coffee and strawberry milk yeah strawberry milk huh you can the yeah. listeners can guess which one ha of us had the coffee and which one had the strawberry milk it actually could have gone either way <laughs> yeah. to be honest because and, and i'm drinking a fine Oreo Coke Zero. What is that? They're okay. <laughs> I had one. It was okay. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, it's 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 whatever. You know, it could have actually gone either way though with the the star because strawberry milk is fucking amazing. Yeah, I have to say, like my, it's, my sister told me to get a strawberry milk today, so that's why. Did I we ever? Did we? You never ever talk about whether between strawberry milk and banana milk, which is the best? I don't know if we have talked about that, but banana milk is the best. 
That is the correct answer. Apparently, okay. we're we're very much in an ADHD uh, podcast right mm. now. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the uh, pieces though. <laughs> so pieces. Uh, that, that's what we're talking about, right? Pieces. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I I can relate to this kid because my dad did walk in on me once, but it was like right after, and then uh, he walked in and. Like, I did want to murder my whole family after that. <laughs> Walked in on what? You putting together a jigsaw puzzle? Yeah, something similar. Okay. Yeah, something something similar to that. Okay, yeah. all right. I mean, it wasn't the, a, a jigsaw puzzle of a naked girl, but it was definitely it was, embarrassing. It was just a dif- different jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. No. It was a monster truck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I think this movie is spectacular. It's, first of all, uh, if I haven't made it clear on this podcast i think i have but if i haven't i love the slasher movies of the 80s like for me even the bad ones i'm a fan yes so this one like big big fan of that guy going in chopping people up and this one i would say is above and beyond like this is this is early 80s is like 1982 this is before the slasher thing had kind of got played out and they're kicking it up a notch. Like there's there's some some blood and guts in this that I think most of the American ones just were not going that far. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I appreciate that they went all in. I will also say it has an interesting European uh, connection. I don't know that we've talked about this on on here at all, but like in the seventies in Italy there was a, a film genre called giallo and giallo was kind of like they're not quite slashers they're more like detective movies okay and somebody gets killed in the beginning sometimes more people get killed but somebody gets killed in the beginning usually the killer you don't see their face you just see they have like black gloves on Mm -hmm. and the rest of the movie is you trying to kind of figure out who it is. So I, I would assume that this movie very much fits into that. I think so. Even though it's Spanish and not Italian, I definitely got strong vibes that they were picking up on that. That, you know, we had a pool of suspects, but we never really... I think there were some hints, but you never really knew until till the end. I yeah. thought this movie was really good. As far like I think you guys <laughs> probably really liked the kill scenes, right? Sure. Because yeah. they were comical, they were bloody... Yeah. They were, you know, they were everything you want from a kill scene. And I also thought they did a really, really good job in this movie of you. There was no way throughout the movie that you could piece together who the actual killer was. I mean, they did a very good job of like making you think, God, it could be like anybody in well, the movie. They really leaned, leaned heavily on that. It was a, the the gardener guy. Right. Because but, he was a but big hulking dude and he had the facial features all the time. Every time he was yeah. around, it was like and the really the only suspicious looking guy in the entire yeah, world. Yeah, and the only time he showed up in the movie is right after a kill. Yeah. But yeah. but I also take <laughs> yeah. and in my limited experience with horror movies, yeah. I always take when they make it that blatantly obvious it's not that guy. That's it's generally yeah. 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 Yeah, I if you know who it is and you watch it, there's probably hints. But to me, like they really didn't drop the big hint until the uh, one of the the one of the women gets into the elevator with the killer, and that to me, the big hint there is she refers to him as sir. Oh, so, so once she says sir. You should know it's not Kendall. It's probably not the gardener. It could be the professor, but it it should narrow it down for you that it's somebody that she respects on the campus. Totally miss that. Did yeah. you catch that at all, Jason? I did not because I respect gardeners. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's like I always call my gardener yeah, sir. I have no disrespect for gardeners, but it's but it's, but it's made very clear there's something oh, no, wrong no, no. with I, you fucking classist. <laughs> there's there's I don't know that they're very clear mm-hmm. about what's wrong with Willard. Yeah. But definitely like the Willard. first the first time we like get the interaction with them, like they want him off that campus before even anyone's even killed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They want him off the so it's, people think there's something wrong with him. <laughs> yeah, but he's never a suspect. <laughs> yeah. That's a weird thing. 
is it's like like the dude he's just like hanging out and he comes walking out of every crime scene. They're stopping people that have nothing to do with anything. Yeah. And they're like, questioning them, and they're like, the yeah. big bully guy that's got a chainsaw <laughs> is no, obviously not him, right? Yeah. <laughs> they, they locked him up after the pool murder. That's true. That's true. So, like, yeah, they probably were like, well, we're not going to keep locking him up. He just happens to be at every crime scene. Yeah. He's just very unlucky. Yeah, they, they they didn't go into a lot of detail about that, but you could you could hear that they said they had to let him go so yeah. they probably held him for a night and then realized that they couldn't prove they did anything so as far as the gore goes i will say you can tell it's very early 80s um i i enjoy it i i feel like this is one of those movies that younger audiences may not appreciate as much only because i mean you got movies like terrifier now they didn't have the ability to do a lot of that stuff back then i mean especially i think it's like really you know not you Gavin, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but when Tom Savini, you know, mm -hmm. when he started, like, I think it's like Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 is pretty early 80s. Yeah. Um, where you, you know, a lot of these slasher movies prior to that, he, he used a lot of tricks. Like, you know, like with, you'd see the shadow on the wall and then you'd see a blood splatter on that shadow or some, something like that. They They would always cut as soon as, you know the actual sawing of the limb was taking place. You didn't get to see it go through flesh. Mm -hmm. You got to see the before, the right before, and then the, the right afterwards. And so you would always see like the chunks and pieces sitting there, but you wouldn't see it actually being, being dismembered or whatever. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but you know, this one I think did a really good job of, you know, um, there wasn't a lot of it, but they did show some of that. Like mm -hmm. they did show, the woman that gets halved in the elevator. Was it the elevator? It's not an elevator. I don't know was exactly it? what that room is. Yeah, there was like a room that she goes in and then he comes in and just saws her in half. And right. you get to see yeah. it go through her midsection, which I appreciated that for a movie. You know, a lot of people, I probably don't realize that, that you didn't see that very, very much in movies from the early 80s. And so, and maybe you guys can answer this for me because I take that as... I think of I think of European countries as being a little more what's the right word but they're willing to allow more of that stuff on television than we are in the US. Yeah, probably. So, yeah. and I would think that that's a huge part of why you saw that in this movie and not in yeah. why you wouldn't have seen that in a US movie in the oh, in the early 80s. Yeah. You saw it in the later 80s. Yeah. But at the beginning, you know, kind of the US yeah. or the European no it definitely, movie started it definitely that. is is pushing it and it could be a European thing um to jump off of Jason's point here like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is like mid to late 70s and everybody thinks that movie is gory but if you watch it like shot mm -hmm. for shot frame by frame there's almost nothing in that entire movie yeah. mm -hmm. it's just implied that's why I said Texas Chainsaw 2 right Right. Yeah. And and then like the the big classics, the kicking off the slasher, you know, is like Friday the Thirteenth and Halloween. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's there's kill scenes, but they're generally they're, they're still very tame. They're pretty tame. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and this really really stepped it up. Yeah, I love that they showed the chainsaw go. You know, obviously it's not really going through her. It's super close mm -hmm. up, so that could have been anything. Yeah. But they actually showed it. They created an effect to show it. Mm -hmm. And um, also a thing you're not going to see in a lot of American movies, you could see some dong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. I, yeah, yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, it's uh, pretty great. <clears throat> and then it's immediately, immediately followed up by a brilliant shot where he's standing in front of a window with a vase. Just yeah, which I think is funny. After showing the dong, then they hide it with the, with the vase with flower in it, as if we didn't just see his dong. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, hey, first, man, they had some standards. Okay, yeah. they had some standards, only for a few seconds. <laughs> they go back just for a second on the. the gore I mean, though. there are movies that you can see dong. Like, if yeah. you want to see like Richard Gere's dong, there's yeah. a there's an early there's an early eighties movie called Breathless. Mm. So if you're <laughs> totally side note, but, but it's not like you can't see dong in American movies. It's just much more rare. Yeah, and mm. I think there's only like it's got there's like rules about how many dong shots they can have. Yeah, right? you know, because like that might be why they use the planter is because like okay, in this movie you're allowed to ha show one side view of the dong hanging. I maybe it they has ha to be flaccid. I I'm wondering if that was like a censorship thing. Yeah, not, or... not like what you're saying, but more like if they were to 
release it to a country where they couldn't show the dong. Yeah. They still had to show him looking out the window. Uh, Otherwise, mm. that scene doesn't make sense. Yeah, that makes... That that, made... that actually does make a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So. But yeah, going back to the gore part of it, though, like the... Uh, I do think they, like, okay. So they were obviously capable of making the scene where, like, you actually see the, the cutting through the midsection, right? Mm-hmm. I do wish that since they were capable of doing that, and they showed they were capable of doing that, that they did more with that instead of just having one scene like that. Because you're, there's, you know, multiple kills in this movie, and 90% of them were what we were talking about earlier, which yeah. was like the Friday the 13th or like uh, some of these, er- like the early Friday the 13th movies where you, you don't see the actual cutting or the yeah. actual murder. Um, I wish they would have since they they demonstrated yeah. that they could do it, that they would have leaned into that more. Um, because if you can make a torso, being cut through a torso, you can make a, yeah. tor- uh, a, a leg. You can make, you know, I mean... I almost wonder if that has something to do with, like, rating scales. It might. Like, again, same thing with, like, the dong. Yeah. They only showed the dong so much because otherwise, you know, in certain countries or whatever, they wouldn't have been able to release it. I wonder if it's the same thing with... Yeah, it could be. It's I I have no idea what the Spanish rules are, but um I am thinking of like early 80s slasher films and you had mentioned Tom Savini. Mm-hmm. Um and Tom Savini listeners listeners probably know. I don't yeah. know if Eric, does Eric know? No, Eric doesn't know anything. Okay. So Tom <laughs> so Tom Savini has he's acted he's directed he's done pretty much everything but he's mostly known as a special effects guy he really um got big in the 80s for doing like kill effects but yeah like i know there's examples there's movies i want to say like the prowler is one and maybe maybe my bloody valentine i get a little confused but i know there's some where there's actually stuff that he did they couldn't put in the movie Mm -hmm. and now like they put it on like the blu-ray or whatever yeah, but at that point in time, like because you couldn't release a movie on rated, you had to get it rated. Mm-hmm. If you wanted to get it an R, they were so dumb about it. They were like, "You can show this, but you can only show it for like three seconds. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Five seconds is too long." Yeah. So there's some really great work he did that that had to get cut, and it was it was taken off. But yeah, I don't know. I wonder if if that was maybe kind of played into. Why didn't? But I don't know that it was necessary. I does it? Does it? Your out. DVD have bonus features? Because I wonder if there's a whole bunch of cutscenes that are just gory the as hell. The Spanish version is three minutes longer. I have no idea what the difference is, though. Yeah. Um, can I say another nice thing about this movie. Yeah, you go right ahead. Okay. I I want to give this movie credit because even though it is a slasher movie and it's a guy going around shopping up girls. You know, the, the same thing all 80s yeah. movies. Um, I think they made a serious effort that you don't see that much of actually developing characters. Mm-hmm. Like, not that we got to know every single victim that well, but it is like the Friday the 13th movies. I love Friday the 13th movies. I do too. But pretty much... You know, like one character, yeah. and everybody else is just completely disposable. And they just bring them on to kill them off, basically. Right. Their personalities are very, oh, just very, just stereotypical. Yeah, mm-hmm. but here I feel like we 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 got a, a you know we got the professor, we got the dean, we got the detective, we got the student Kendall, um, we got the tennis pro, mm-hmm. um, and you know, so we we've got a whole range of different personalities here. So there's actually like some character development which is not a common thing in a slasher That's i true. will actually agree with you there yeah. um my thing though was i felt like a lot of a lot of that character development and stuff moves slow yeah, yeah. which is slow. why they don't usually do it so yeah. you know because it's cool that they tried yeah but and i think a lot of that also comes back to like you said with that whatever the genre you called it was yeah. where they really Developed this as both a kind of a mystery movie as well as a slasher film because yeah, yeah. there was a lot of investigation stuff in here. I think you called them Jello movies. Jello, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jello. So, Jello, Jello pudding pop. Yeah, and uh, yeah. So I don't know. 
So was it a good one for, to come back on? What do you guys think? I think so. Like, yeah, like, why not? I mean, it has been, what, four months or <laughs> something like that? <laughs> I don't really have much bad to say. Like, I don't either. I love the ending, too. There's a couple of spots that I think, you know, are maybe a little slower. They could have they could have trimmed it. But even, like, that's really me being nitpicky because yeah. the movie as a whole is moves at a pretty good pace. Yeah, yeah. and, and wh- how long of a movie was it? It's did not it, that long. Did it stay, stay in your safe zone? Yeah. Okay. I don't so. remember it exactly, but it's definitely under ninety minutes. It's 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 yeah. a good good pace. Yeah. It gets in, does what it needs to do and gets out. And it has some like this movie does have like even during the you know, kind of the more drawn out like, you know, dialogue scenes, there were some really funny scenes that I think they were unaware of were funny when they made them. Like the woman screaming, what was it? She was yelling. Bastard. Yeah, bastard. <laughs> she yells it like four times. And, yeah. and I mean, it, they could have gone even a couple more times and, and I think I would have been okay with yeah, it. Yeah, Jason was really disappointed when, when the final one came. You're like, come on, one more. Yeah, one I, don't more. Think, yeah, I don't think that was intentionally funny, but it is, it yeah, is funny. It works. And that really helps the movie, I think, because, you know, I, I, I don't think it would be as entertaining if there weren't just little nuggets of unaware situa- situations where they were unaware that they were being funny. The ending, I just got to, I, I want to talk about this ending because. Yeah. Oh, you're going to spoil it? I was going to leave it open for the people. I but like we've spoiled it. We spoil yeah, everything. So, yeah, like, and you should really be listening to this after you watch the movie. Yeah. So, because this is a review of the movie. But, like, I would say the ending, you know, I really appreciate, and I don't know why, I, like, it, I just have a weird thing where I love nonsensical endings that just, you know, it, it just throws you out of everything and you're like, what the fuck was that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, um, the first one that comes to mind for me is Nowhere, the movie Nowhere. Yeah. Um, just, you know, for anybody who's not seen it, spoiler alert, I'm going to spoil the ending to this movie pause or whatever if if that's a problem uh so the ending to nowhere they're laying in bed this these two gay guys they're laying in this bed and all of a sudden one of them just turns into a like ex, like starts freaking out and explodes turns into like a weird cockroach thing starts climbing out the window looks back and says i'm out of here <laughs> climbs out the window. Okay, and... so this one is way better than the, the one on this I don't movie, know, man. but but <laughs> this. Yeah. Um, I I honestly like if you like that's like really weird ass movies. Nowhere, it's Greg Araki, same guy that Doom Generation, which we've. Oh, we okay, ever... wait, actually, I think I've seen that. You, movie. you probably have. seen, you yeah, have. guaranteed yeah. you have, yeah. But we reviewed Doom Generation for the podcast. Um, Doom Generation is a great place to start for Greg Araki movies, I would say. Yeah. But um, we're not reviewing those movies right now. No, but I will. But... I will throw in a pitch that uh, the, those two and a third one are now out on uh, Blu-ray from the Criterion Collection. Really? Ooh. What's the third one? Totally fucked up. Oh yeah, I remember <laughs> that one. Yeah, that one is. I wasn't gonna say it because I yeah. didn't want to. I don't want to use the word, but that is what the movie's called. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, those that endings like that, I have always appreciated it and. Um, you know, it's like, if you don't really have a, like anything original or like, uh, y- you know, like a really cool twist, weird thing, like, let's just make it fun. Mm-hmm. You know, like sometimes I think I th- sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. In this case, I think it works. I think it's, you know, like, all right, we killed the, the guy or whatever. Let's fucking, let's just do something weird, <laughs> you know? And I was it supposed to be the guy that was under the See, I don't body bag, or was it the body of the I mob? Think it was the reassembled corpse? Was it okay? That's the thing. It was because yeah. it fell off out of the closet onto him. Yeah, and then, but they were they were carting it out, right? They carted. Uh, I think it was the reassembled corpse because it looked like she had like fingernails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes no sense. It, yeah, it makes was, absolutely but, no sense, but hey. But that's, yeah, yeah that, that's definitely a weirder one. But yeah, that was kind of a thing, you know, you'd end a movie with like 
somebody would go visit a grave and then a hand would pop up out of the grave at the last second, you know. Yeah. That was pretty, I, was, I can't name one at this second, but I know I've seen that a few times. Yeah, and it could be like a movie that doesn't have anything to do with zombies or people coming back yeah. from the dead. But they, they, they get to the end of the movie and they're like, let's throw one more scare yeah. in there. And they're like... But I'm thinking even Friday the 13th, the original, uh, like, we are not old enough that we saw it in the theater. Right. But I'm wondering how that <clears throat> played for people who saw it in the theater. Because sp I'm going to spoil Friday the 13th <laughs> now. If you haven't seen Friday the 13th and you're listening to this podcast, yeah. you got issues. So Friday you're the a friend of Eric's, probably. <laughs> Friday, Friday, Friday the 13th, the original one. At, at the end of the movie, we find out that the killer is Mrs. Voorhees. And then everything's fine and good. And Alice is out on the canoe. And at the last moment, Jason Voorhees, the son, is all deformed. And he pops up out of the lake and grabs Alice. Now, for all of us who grew up way later, and we know that Jason Voorhees is the guy who wears the hockey mask and chops people up, that's not as big of a shock ending. Right. But I'm wondering like, how that played when it first came out, because nobody knew who Jason Voorhees was yet. Right. That didn't mean anything. And it right. kind of, I'd almost bring up a question for you. Which, which of these movies came out first? Because it Friday almost the 13th did. Did it? Okay, yeah. because it almost seems like one of them ripped the concept off from the other one. Because mm. they're very, very similar. No, the, I mean, the ending to Friday the 13th, that the, the, the kind of weird ending that was him jumping out of the water, and he's like a deformed kid. So it's, I mean, it's similar in the sense that it's, you know, like a weird thing to happen that doesn't have anything. Right, but I think it's very similar because it's like, because I took the ending of this movie as them leaving it open for a sequel. Oh yeah, yeah. And I guess and yeah. they were switching a very the killers. Weird sequel, but <laughs> well, and that was going to be one of my other questions: is it if they do make a sequel in in the next movie, is this reassembled body? Yeah. Maybe are you guys like, into that, or are you like, oh, are you like that is really, like, really hey, stupid? We watch May on this. Yeah, podcast? I was just gonna. I, I'm thinking exactly the same thing. I'm like, maybe the sequel is May. <laughs> I mean, that was a great movie too, and that's one. May I have, is really good, and I have not seen that movie in so long. Yeah, Jeremy Sisto. Yeah, I gotta mention well, him every time because I love yeah, that guy. I know Jeremy Sisto. That's you weird. You gotta mention James Duvall since you didn't mention him. Being oh, one of the guys in nowhere. Yeah, James Duvall. I oh, I love that guy. He's just they don't use him enough in Hollywood. No, I did. I did get to meet him. He's a, he's a sweetie. And I, but I do like that they. You know, he was in all these apocalypse movies, right? You know, like Doom's Doom Generation, yeah. or whatever. He's Donnie in Darko. Donnie Darko. Yep. And then he's also in Independence Day. <laughs> yeah. So like, he, that's definitely like a running theme for him. So like, I I do feel like any like big budget like end of the world movie should include James yeah. Duvall in some way. I feel bad that he seemed to be everywhere in like the mid to late nineties and then it just kind of dropped off. I agree. Because I don't know I no idea. Maybe he's doing all kinds of things and I they're just not things I watch, but mm -hmm. I always like seeing him. I love seeing that guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. All right, so should we switch to ratings sure. on this bad boy? Yeah. yeah. Who wants to start? Honestly, oh, I can go first. Uh, the IMDb rating for this one, I think, is pretty much on. Like, I, it's what I would give it, like a straight up six, because I think you know, I would rate it higher. I think if I if I had seen it as a kid, because I I try to picture myself like not having you know. I think I'm jaded at this point. You know, just seeing so much gore and so much whatever. And I want to give this movie credit for doing it, you know, albeit not as much as modern day, but like back then doing it at all, like this seeing the torso getting chopped in or sawed in half. I mean, I think that that was really cool. Um, I did think it just kind of dragged on a little bit. Um, but overall, I think, you know, for what it was and for its time and its contribution to the slasher or whatever, like, I think is good. Yeah. You know? What about you, Gavin? Well, I was really surprised. I, uh, I went to, to log it to say that, yeah, I watched it. 
And so I saw what I had rated it last time. And I was very surprised how low I rated it last time. Um, apparently, I, I gave it an 8. And that's hmm. that's unforgivable. Really? So I, so I bumped Holy it shit. up to a 10. Holy oh, shit. Wow. Gavin really liked 10. this movie. Damn. Yeah. This, this to me, I mean, I... It this I can't make a great argument for it. It's a personal taste thing, but for me, this is this has got to be one of the top great horror movies. It's got all the things that I want in a movie. So uh, it, for some people, it's not going to achieve that. Some people are going to be like, it's a guy going around with a chainsaw, <laughs> cutting people <laughs> up, yeah. and I'm like, yeah, but it works for me. I love the. The the characters, I uh, the weird suspects. It reminded me of another movie that I like, which is not a good movie, um, called Student Bodies, because I was like, Student Bodies feels like it almost ripped this movie off <laughs> with some of the scenes. Like, uh, maybe maybe we'll do that at some point. You guys seen yeah. Student Bodies? I don't think I may have, but I don't remember. Okay, Student Bodies is like an early eighties. Horror parody, okay, and it's a slasher film, but the whole thing is supposed to be a comedy. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like the whole, like the guy in the gloves and the <gasps> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, the breathing was like, thing was pretty funny yeah, throughout the was, movie. I'm like, come on, really? I was like, wow, he's, this is just like the <laughs> this is like the bad guy from Student Bodies. I mean, every I think every bad guy you know that gets on the phone in the early '80s had that heavy breathing. Yeah. <laughs> Like people breathe heavier. The when, bad when, guys did. Yeah, you know, when, when you become a bad guy, it's just default in, that you breathe in the eighties for sure. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, it, it probably because everybody smoked so much <laughs> or something. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it's, they all have asthma. I don't know. So I can't. I can't really justify it. It's personal preference, but I'm a solid ten for me. Okay. Right. I'm gonna give it a five. All right. And I really don't have anything. I probably would rate this movie much higher if we had like if this had been our fourth movie. But you know, like my. My whole watching horror movies thing has lapsed here, so like I, I, I hate them more now. Yeah. Again, oh, no. you lost it's, your tolerance. Yeah, I lost like my tolerance to it. So, so, yeah. but I mean, I really don't have anything to complain about this movie. But I did think at times that I was getting bored with yeah. it. But I do love this genre that you're talking about, and I would be really interested to see more movies in that genre because I think it's cool how. They melded the mystery alongside the, of the, the Italian one. Yeah, yeah. I, I think See, that's I, really fascinating. And honestly, for me, I think that's that's why I'm I'm not fully on board with it is because I'm not a big fan of like crime thrillers. I'm um, not either, but I I like the fact that they yeah. just melded two genres together cool. like that. Yeah, yeah. So, and I, I for some reason, and this is this is my a flaw of mine, and Gavin knows as well. Like I I have a hard time with anything earlier than 1980s like and this this is early enough in the 80s where it's still got that 70s feel and the 70s for me like um you know like i I watch some of these movies like uh the wizard of gore and stuff like that from the 70s and yeah it's like they're showing blood and guts but it's not it's like it doesn't have the same feel or something you're seeing props yeah and you're seeing blood you know like you can go to a haunted house you can you know make those yourself yeah like, that's true like I, I, I could totally see that yeah like and that's where i i have a huff, hard time um you know just the the 70s the way the movies were made i think the 80s was like you know we're gonna a lot of it was like a slow burn and then the last you know little bit like half hour 45 minutes that's where they're gonna shoot their mm-hmm. load and they're gonna like so you're gonna see a bunch <laughs> of gore and whatever so there's still that payoff Whereas, and I feel like in the seventies, there it's there's not that big payoff at the end because they hadn't they hadn't really gotten the the practical effects down yet. I wonder if uh, I I think Jason that in the case of this movie, I think my hangups and your hangups are very similar because I think you just described a lot of my hangups at the same time. Yeah. Is is that I don't like the mystery genre either. Yeah. But I like the fact that they put it in there, but it would have been better if it was a different genre. Yeah. And then, you know, like the kill scenes, yeah, there was a level of cheesiness. You could, in almost every kill scene, you could tell it was just a dummy of some sort. Well, that one scene, remember with the arm coming off? It it was like, 
They're just like, I bumped the arm and it falls off. <laughs> you didn't, you didn't like that? No, I loved it. I loved it because it was so bad. But, um, but yeah, like that's what we're working with here. Like, and and when have... you, you went talking about ridiculousness when they, when she, when the guy casts out the, the pool <laughs> the net and pulls the girl in and the girl's like, yeah. oh, I can't get yeah. out. And it's like, come on, lady. Yeah, I don't, all know, you... I don't know why she can't just duck <laughs> Yeah, Yeah, like all you got to yeah. do is take your hand and push and that thing's coming off. Yeah, of that you, whole so. scene, it had me on an edge streak, edging and mewing. You were edging I, and mewing. I was mewing to try to stop from edging. Yeah. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, I was like, man, I'm losing all of my riz. I have no drip left. And yeah. my brain, I'm, I have brain rot. I'm just all skivvity. Yeah. You know, I'm probably from Ohio. Whoa. Yeah, wow. I, I, know. Oh. <laughs> I know. I know. Wow. I didn't mean to take it that far. Skivvity, <laughs> skivvity all day. Yeah, skivvity. So, all right. Do we got anything else with this one? or I th- No. I, I think I'm good. All right. Well, guess what? We're going to watch another movie right after this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, it sounds like you're going to get... For sure, two more, or at least one more podcast after this one. So yeah, I will say, if you uh, if you watched pieces and you like it, I do also recommend Slugs. Oh, from, Slugs from, is from the like. same director. I don't necessarily recommend Extraterrestrial Visitors. <laughs> I don't think it's a bad movie, yeah. but it's a huge step down. I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to believe it's the same guy. Yeah. Um. And Slugs, if I remember right, has a lot of very, um, the, the, the scenes of the slugs and stuff were very similar to this, where you, you see the beforehand kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden they just cut to a scene where like the person's exploded and there's slugs everywhere. Mm -hmm. Am I right in that? I don't remember okay. <laughs> All right. people exploding with slugs. Maybe. Yeah. Cause I, I'm pretty sure slugs is the one where you like people right. have slugs that are like, like. It's something in them that causes them to like explode and there's slugs everywhere or some shit. Could be. Yeah. I think so. Are but... you thinking of like Night of the Creeps? Maybe. I might be getting my shit slug... confused. You could be right. Slugs mostly is just these slugs with teeth that bite people. But... Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, maybe I, we have I to think watch he's that. probably wrong then on that one. Yeah, so. probably. I'm all but, but I haven't been a while. It's, you know, maybe I got to rewatch Slugs now. So yeah, I might yeah. have to do that. Too. Maybe that'll be the next I, movie. Maybe I'm way wrong. I don't know. Yeah, but our next our next one is going to be Benny Loves You, which is uh, it's just a fun. You know, like we've had a like over the past couple of years, we've had a lot of movies about like you know, Freddy. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy's came out. Imaginary came out. Um, Five Nights at Freddy Got Fingered. Five Nights at Freddy <laughs> Got Fingered. Um, yeah, I mean, we've had a lot of movies lately of just, like, killer toys and stuff like that. And I I think this one stands out. Um, you know, I, I haven't seen Imaginary, but I've not heard good things. It's not it. good. Okay. Yeah, I've heard not good things. And Freddy... I, I keep wanting to say Freddy Got Fingered. <laughs> Jesus Christ, fuck you, Gavin. <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy Got Fingered was... Uh, was a disappointment for most people too. I didn't think it was that good, but this one, I, I think, I think this one is entertaining. The, the special effects aren't the greatest, but it's entertaining, well, and we're gonna we're gonna review that more. Yeah, so. you don't have to say anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm you're, not gonna you're, say you're, anything. You're pretty much given a review but, right well, now. I know, so. but I'm saying it just let people who listen to this podcast go out and watch that one mm. before watching the next yeah. one. So get ready for that. So, all right. Well, we want to thank everybody for tuning into this podcast, and we'll be back again with another episode. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Peace. Peace. Thanks for tuning in to the Milwaukee Mafia podcast. Join us next time for another look back at Wisconsin Mafia and true crime history.